you, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA The Internet's most passionate wine program, and I'm very, very, very excited. Very cubed. That was three berries, I don't That's know if you amazing. call it. Um, we have a very interesting guest to me. I, uh, we got to yapping a little bit off camera, and I, I paid him a compliment, I'm gonna do it publicly. I think what Brian has done with this winery in the web world, because he did it in forums, pre-social media, pre-Facebook, Twitter, in building this brand and building true relationships with people that eventually became his customers. Watching it from afar, ironically what we were talking about was, we, we, I used to do so many um, you know, live meetups with people I talked to on wine forums, back when Mark Squire's board wasn't even on E. Robert Parker, and we, we share an enormous amount of mutual friends and have probably tasted with those individuals multiple times separately, but never together, ironically. I remember three or four occasions that I knew the dates didn't work when you were in, in town. Yeah. Um, but I think he textbook played the crush it model that I wrote about of how businesses today should build brand, and he did this five, six, seven, eight years ago. When did you start getting involved in, in wine forums? Wine forums, probably 99, when I was starting yeah. my first vintage. Um, I was doing work as a software engineer, so I was all day on a computer, and I needed you know a little bit of break here and then. <laughs> so the natural thing was, as being a wine person, was to gravitate towards the wine boards. Yeah. And you know, Where it wasn't- Where did you go, West Coast, remember West, Brad West Harrington's? Coast, yeah, West That's Coast was That's one not of the around first anymore, one. right? Uh, you know, I haven't. Truth, Rob, I haven't. Robin Gars. Robin Gars, Wine Lovers Page. Spectator had their Spectator thing. Spectator had theirs, and then definitely Squires. Squires took off, and then we got hooked up with Parker, mm -hmm. and really took off. Mm -hmm. Now today, there's also Wine Berserker that yeah, I tend to be a lot Toddy on. French. Yeah, Big and him. the um, the thing was, you know, I it wasn't really a marketing plan. I mean, you, you give me credit for that, and I wish I could take credit for it, but it was just I was a wine. Do what I do. Take credit yeah. for things after the fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That Twitter thing, I knew it. Yeah. No, I did. I'll but show you know, the the thing at the time was that if it had been a marketing thing, I don't think it would have worked. Because- You were just being you. It was wine geeks talking, and, and anything that people came on, it seemed so artificial at the time, that it, I don't think it would have no happened. Question. So it was just- People going on there pitching were yeah. not winning. No, no. I mean, so it was just a matter of, hey guys, I'm making some wine, and people go, hey, we'd like to try it. Sure. And before you knew it, it was, it had become- This thing. thing. It yeah, was, it was a great, great thing. Yeah, it was and pretty so, fun. You also, God, was it 99 when you started doing yeah, that? I'm starting to feel really not good Ooh. about where we are 11 years later. Wow. Anyway, Pinot was always a big thing for you. It's and been the so love. You, it's been the you passion. You were there pre-sideways. You caught, I think your timing was really good. It, you could Once again, you couldn't really get in a time machine and go back and pick a better place at a better time with the internet coming on, with Pinot coming at the time. Really, when I started, it was ridiculous. Ridiculous to try and make California Pinot Noir. Nobody Very wanted difficult. it. Nobody I mean, wanted it. You know, there was people like Rockioli was making some noise on a culty level. I don't even think Flowers was out yet Not doing yet. it. Calera yeah. had been up and running. Yeah. Uh, the one that I For really. For a while. Yeah, really they were going. Cool. The one that I really emulated Paul bon was Siduri. Siduri yeah. kind Siduri, of set yeah, the Lee. model. No question. The buying of the fruit from all these vineyards, working with the growers, buying by the acre, getting your spot in there. No question. And, and creating all these single vineyard wines and in a little bigger style, which mm -hmm. I found that I liked, and also produced consistently good wines. That was the problem early on they in were California. Definitely a bigger, they were definitely a bigger Pinot play, right? Yeah. I mean, that was really what then ultimately, a lot of you guys were the pioneers of what got kind of a little out of hand. But you, you know? have to remember at the time, it had never been done. Right, so it was so like big all, Pinot. We all walked the line where we said, okay, well, that was great, but what can we do next year? And we, we did all walk up the ladder. And by about 03, 04, all of us, because all the guys are my friends, we were all doing it together, we looked at each other and went, okay, you know, that's good, now we've got our data. And then we found where we wanted to be on that ladder. And more importantly, if you go time machine, um, I'm, I'm really trying to work on these air you know, <laughs> quotes. Um, time machine, you know, this was, when you came out, we were in the, you know, the heat of the excitement of Zins, that were like 16%, like it became like the biggest, yeah. the biggest Zin alcohol level you could have. I remember buying Sparrow Lane and it was like 16.7 and everybody was like, this is what I live for. And, and especially on the boards at the time, people were Barossa Shiraz, 1998 Barossa Shiraz Burge, 
Fox Creek, that huge style, they yep. were obsessed. Yep. So there was a natural progression of everything was probably emulating what was going on in society. I'm sure if we look back, this is when the cars were getting bigger, when McDonald's, I mean, McDonald's large soda eventually started looking <laughs> like this. I mean, it really went there. Yeah. So yeah. this was a bigger, bigger, bigger movement in our society. But also, I, I think there's there was an underpinning of actually, let's look at terroir. I know it sounds silly because people say, what do you mean, terroir at 16, You mean the single vineyards, right? But, but just the fact that in the past, in California's focus was, let's be French. And all of a sudden it became, hey, look, these people are deciding they don't have to be French or they don't have to be Italian. We can be what we are. So then I think that led to the progression of, well, what does it really mean to be California Pinot or right. Australian Shiraz? Did it become embracing the sunshine? In some in ways, some ways right? and also embracing the latitude. We're so farther south, we need longer hang time to get the rightness. We don't have the sunshine, the daylight hours they have up far north in Burgundy. So you need to let the fruit hang. With that comes more sugar. No question. And But now the, now the challenge for us is to figure out with all that data and how to balance it all out. Because I'll tell you, some of our early wines, wow, they were amazing. And for those first year or two, and then they just fell apart because we weren't paying attention to the underlying structure, the acid, the tannin. It's and now it's we're like Backstreet to... Boys versus the Beatles. Okay. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? I mean, a lot of those wines, if you look back, they were like these big, hyped, exciting stuff, and they had like twenty-four month windows. Yeah. And I, I assume that you would like to have a longer window period for these 08s. You know, yes. I, I do because I think it's important that the wines will hold up for a while, but at the same time, so I just consumed young. But I want them to be ready to go right away because unlike, I like unlike Burgundy, right? Whereas, I like whereas the some of the old school stuff is like the I can't think of a, a good example, but was are appreciated after death, right? Like it's yeah. an, you know I don't know what so we have Backstreet Boys, we have the Beatles. Here's a little question today. Leave us a comment of somebody who dramatically gained steam life after death because that's what really happens with some of those old world wines. Those first five years the the only reason that people like them is because of the pedigree. Yeah. They, well, they're like, oh yes, this is good, it's complicated. But meanwhile, you don't like that wine. You like it because it's gotten big press in the time, you know, in the past. You like it because you think you're supposed to like it, but a lot of those wines are not approachable in the first 24 months. And then you find out that they cost a lot of money. You pay a premium for something you can't consume for five or six years, which I don't understand. You know, logic, Do you feel like if you take yourself out of the wine world where everything's kind of twisted, that logic doesn't really apply. I'm not gonna buy something in the supermarket that I can't consume for five years and then pay a premium for it. Do you feel, great little interesting point, do you feel um, competitive with other places in the world that make Pinot Noir? In a sense, uh, I'm, shoot, I wanna make the best Pinot Noir ever. Right. That's my goal every single Love bottle. It. I wanna make the damn best wine that I can. I want to have that wine so good that I drink half a bottle and I want to pour the other over my head and just go, yes. this is the greatest thing yes, ever. Now you're winning me over. But, Keep going. But I don't want to surplant Burgundy because right. Burgundy's Burgundy. I love Burgundy. I don't want it to go So away. you don't want to punch want somebody to... in the face no. from Central Otago. There is so No, God, no. You, I love You don't want to go and, you know, pile drive a Burgundy producer. No, no. In fact, Maybe. I mean, you've got a wine today on your thing with uh, uh, Mount Difficulty. That was awesome. Pretty, yeah, for 15 Incredible. bucks. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible wines. Uh, in fact, if I could figure out how to get fruit from New Zealand <laughs> or or Burgundy sure. to my winery, I would do it. But you let, know, aside me, from the let cost, me, let me mention another point. We were I was marking these wines up for the show. Thirty nine ninety nine for somebody who's gotten the kind of press and who's built up the loyal following. Uh, again, from afar because we we know each other but don't know each other. I'm very impressed with how fair your prices Thanks. are. Is, is, talk was, to me about that. Is that juice? Do you think the market's softer? Is this conscious because you want it to be a long-term thing? Like, where, where's your mindset? Thirty-nine ninety-nine. Let me just, you know, he's going to be bashful now, and he's already played the humble card. Though you can see he's aggressive. <laughs> I love him. Um, that's a very fair price for a track. I mean, we are seeing tons of Pinot, even in this climate. You know, come out at forty-five, fifty bucks first year. This guy's got a long track record with big press. And I was looking at the sheet before. I mean, what do we got? Ninety-two point spectator, ninety-one spectator, ninety-two spectator, and then ninety-four, ninety-two, and ninety-six Pinot report. I mean, you know, you've got a track record plus a fan base plus you know a business that's been around for a while. You're still awfully fair. Thanks. Well, when I looked at the winery, being a consumer, I mean, as a consumer first, I've been on. I'm on like I'm still on twenty mailing lists for Pinot Noir. Uh, I am a consumer, I understand yes. it. I don't want yes. to see, when I see the prices rise, it drives me crazy. 
And so... Is when, that when you want to punch somebody in the face? Sometimes. Okay, uh, I gotta but, find that soon. Yeah, but the thing is, when I started the winery, the goal was I wanted to do everything that I wanted a winery to do. So whether... Interact. We, interact. Give a crap. Give, you, what good pricing, pricing. You know, stay with Go the to people. tastings all day long. Yeah, be out there, be accessible, explain what we do. I mean, we, one of the... Myself and probably Adam Lee from Suduri on the internet are probably the two winemakers that will tell you everything we do. We're, I'm not hiding anything. You want to know about winemaking, you want to know what we do, how we pick, what we do in the process, we'll tell you. Because we just love sharing it. We want to, it's kind of like, hey, I got inside and now I can tell everybody what's going on. Right. And it's exciting I snuck to into me. the club, coming yeah, back yeah, and like, guess yeah, what they did. Yeah, yeah, look at this. So uh, we wanted the wines to be something that you could drink and get all the time. Wines, once again, that you don't have to lay down. You can take them home, you can drink them. And that you can keep buying them, hopefully. Because this, this is something I want to do when I'm 80 years old. How I'm not your, trying to build a your, business to sell. How is your, how is your direct-to-consumer you know, mailing list business? How's that going? It's, it's slowed way down. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the, the thing that's going on right now. And, and truthfully, and I'm buying less. And that's the for a lot of people, oh, right? Oh, yeah. And I'm buying less from people. But we're still keeping it strong. We, we, you know, we're hanging with the people. We try and give them you know, some breaks sometimes. Shipping here, shipping yeah, here, yeah. this and that. And... And it's, it's keeping a loyal base. And really what I tell people, too, is I don't want people to buy too much. Just buy a little bit. And then go buy other people's stuff. Right. Keep it exciting. Keep it fresh. Don't don't end up with a cellar full of our stuff. Keep it going. And and that's and that happened to a lot of people with Kistler and Turley and some other brands. I've got, I've got you know, hundreds of bottles of some wineries that I, I just you can't do. buy anymore. You know, because I'm full. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Out of space. And I love them. But I, what, what can I do, you know? And that's part of, I think that's the, the thing that all of us as wine geeks, when you start out, we get caught up in this this idea of collecting. Absolutely. And the collecting mentality. And then all of a sudden, wines become so precious because you've collected them and you don't want to drink them. And it's one of the biggest things I'd like to see our wine community change is buy these wines, drink these wait wines. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Actually drink the wines? Drink the damn you're wine. Getting, you're getting very rogue here. Oh, God. The, the idea that you're going to set these away and you're, you're too afraid to drink them. And then, then what happens? You've spent all your budget on all these wines that you don't drink. So then you just go out and buy, well, and it, not that there aren't great four, five, six dollar bottle wines, but your everyday drinking has been pushed back at the expense of... Because you're of, offsetting the investment you went, made right. over so, here. So, so you're drinking worse. Drink, spend your money on the 90%. Make the 90% Which is why you're so... So, which is why you're probably passionate about Pinot because it is actually somewhat approachable, yes. young. Yes. Whereas if you start making big, bold, you know, Cabernets or Barolo or some other, you know, these yeah. bigger wines, they're difficult to drink, young. Unless they're like Spanish reds, like right. Cleo and El Nido. But right. That. That's a whole other. <laughs> Let's talk about this. This yes. makes you a little bit different as well. Thank you. We, uh, when I first started the winery, and people were just back in '99, 2000, talking about alternative closures. I was like, I am not going to be the guy. The, nobody's ready. I'm not going to leave the charge. Then after three years of putting wine under cork and pouring them at events and seeing one bottle per case that was affected. Is from, that what you felt? That's what I was Because you're going to freak out the nation right now. It was. I mean, that's, a, a, that's an outrageous ratio. It, now, the TCA, I don't know if everybody's familiar with it, but the cleaning process of cork, there can be in the, I think the cork industry is admitting to 2 to 3% that there will be a chemical that leaches into the wine and basically ruins it. It creates the, makes the wine taste moldy, smell musty. But there's also variations, and right? And it's variations because it's just a few parts per billion that cause it, and the corks have And don't become amounts. that wine nerd now that thinks that everything is TCA. No. Because that whole thing is... Right. I'm, a, I'm a little bit over that. Yeah. I mean, this whole theory, like, you know how that gets, especially in, like, right. the wine for Like, you go to these dinners, like, corked, corked. Yeah. Everybody's trying to show that they're smarter than the next guy when the wines are... I don't know if you know this. I was at an event. Sorry, riffing. Um... And this one guy was just being outrageously obnoxious, a, a, a contributor to, I took the Who three bottles and sent them to be tested all clean. Wow. Because yeah. I was just like tired of it. I was like, come on, like, you know, like not everything is cork, no, you, you know? You can't go to that extreme. But the thing is, corks do affect the wines. And as an engineer, my previous life writing uh -huh. software, sure. I couldn't in good conscience, even if it's 2% failure rate, I couldn't in good conscience say, I'm going to produce something that's going to fail. Two out of, yeah. Yeah, that's just not fair to the consumer. And also, a lot of the consumers, even to this day, still don't know about corked wines. 
they just they take the wine and think I'd make something bad. And that scares the crap out of you. It's horrible. And then with the screw cap, um, first thing off, price differential. The cork and the capsule were costing us a little over a buck. Screw cap was costing us 15 cents. Well, this is, see, I'm telling secrets, top yeah. secret stuff. It l enabled us to keep the cost down. Plus, when you go to a screw cap, this to, is, try, sorry to, interrupt. Go ahead. to try and find a bottle that works with a screw cap, the bottles, this bottle does not weigh like some of those big bottles you get. When we switched to screw cap, our case uh, weight went down nine pounds, three quarters of a pound per bottle less in glass. That's less cost too, helps us keep our price down. Our wine's ready to drink right away. The screw cap, there's great data that shows you know, eight, nine, ten years for this. It's probably longer. It just hasn't been done hasn't in been quantity yet. And the amazing thing is that we found, we switched in 2004. This is our fifth vintage in screw cap. Those 04s, they've aged. They're not stuck in time. They've actually developed the secondary characteristics, the acids have softened, the tans have softened. I don't know if it's exactly what cork would have done, because we didn't do any trials on it, but it's are, are in my mind it's similar. to do maybe a little trial, or at this point it doesn't matter? The, really. the pro once again, I get back to my engineering days, we're trying to come up with valid data. I, in order to do that, I would have to bottle so many under cork so that the bottom line sure. ran and we yeah. didn't have any variations yep. that came in. It, it's just not worth it to me. Truthfully, I don't know if this is the final answer. Cork might be the final answer if they really get change to change it. They're the ones that created this problem right. in the first place. For all I know, in in ten years, we won't be talking about glass with with tree bark in it or a screw cap. We might everybody might be buying bag in a box. Absolutely, Tetra Pak. It's huge in Australia I, and the UK. I huge. I will not rule out anything. To me, it's like the music industry. Once you got past the idea that it had to be music on a vinyl disc. That's right. It went away. I mean, we have a whole generation of kids who've never bought music in any round format, CD or otherwise. So why no track? Why don't we look at this from a functional standpoint and make it deliver the product in the way it's supposed to be? Could be a can. Could be a can. I don't care. A funnel. <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, a bag with a funnel. It could like, be. It could be, could be anything. Could be anything. Could be a decanter, by the way. I've been thinking about that kind of weirdly. I'm like, huh? Why not just? Come into the like, like you know, maybe not the most obnoxious, but like, uh, the, there's some decanters in the market yeah. that aren't much wider than this. Uh -huh. You know, just like Almadine actually used, they to, used to have Almadine? those. Yeah, that those was like kind of like the, like harafi kind of thing. Yeah, because I started working in wine shops in '77, so yeah, I remember all those days. And Mad Dog 2020. Yeah, well, I never Boone's drank Farm. it, but Boone's Farm, of mm -hmm. course. You know, all the Matus and yeah, Lancers. Yeah. The the oh, it, and the Lancers, the room. and the guys, they like the Lancers because the earthenware crock did, yep. that was actually glass, yeah. right? Painted yeah. glass. Uh, <laughs> but to me, the thing is when people talk about like the romance of the cork and the screw cap, you know, my... my Which is kinda, the only debate, by the way, yeah, they've got left. My, my kind of, you know, smart-ass reply is, look, at the end of the night, if what you remember about that wine was the fact that you pulled the cork out and of it... it Instead of a screw cap, that wine must have sucked. That's a really interesting That mine sucked. Plus, I'm waiting for, like, giveaways. Like, I think you should put underneath your cork, you want a free <laughs> trip to, the, you know, that's what I'm waiting for, the marketing. Forget everything yeah. else. I want to collect all seven and make, like, a whole thing and then, like, send it in and get a free trip to your to your house. And unfortunately, Can we do that? Yeah, unfortunately, our, our friends at the uh, Alcohol and Tobacco Trade and Won't let us do it? No, because remember, those are the guys that brought you Waco. You yeah. don't, they, they have their rules. You don't yeah. mess with them. And... They're there for and a reason. What do you think about this new rule that, that they're pushing for? Their uh, bill being introduced to Congress, trying to really give uh, the wholesalers. Le Have you seen this? Where no. There's a new uh, bill being introduced to Congress that uh, this, that would make states exempt from the courts in the liquor laws. Yeah, but I mean, the Supreme Court's already ruled on it. You know, you can keep going. The repeal of prohibition was just done wrong. Yeah. yeah at the really, end, it really yep. was. That was the problem. Uh, the the one thing that I want to see, and I can't, and it's, I mean, we've had momentum over the last four or five years, is come up with a workable national program. Allow people to sell. This is a product. None of us look. None of us want to sell wine to uh, minors. I mean, that's the big thing that you get. This, you know, that's the propaganda they use in the press, right? None of us want that. We just want people to be able to buy what they want to buy. This is a. I mean, this is a You can a buy legal knives. Product. You can buy on guns. You can buy grenades anything. Grenades online. Now, why can't you buy wine? And I understand. And the oh, wines get why. shipped. The wines get shipped with the adult signature. It's all. Yep. And and we look. We pay taxes yeah. as wineries. We pay sales tax in all these states. So I don't even know what the tax issue is. 
it's it's market share. But 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 that's another problem. California, we sell more wine through distribution into wine shops and restaurants in California than any other state. And we have our biggest direct sales in that state. Yeah. And in fact, the states that when we've gone into with distribution, the states where we had direct sales, like Illinois, they there was a ready market. The name was already out 1, there. There was a buzz. There was a buzz going on. So it didn't hurt the distributor. It actually had helped the distributor. And look, I don't want to undermine the three-tier system. I love our distributors. They do great jobs for me. I can't physically go out across the country into 36 sure. states that we're in now and visit every retail shop and restaurant. Well, some shops we have, obviously. Uh, but I need somebody out there. I need One, people on the street. It serves an absolute purpose. Absolutely. So, you know, distributors but don't think we're trying to, to undercut but they, you. But they shouldn't go the complete other way, which means nothing for anybody no, but us. No, no, no. It should be, it needs to be balanced. There's another thing in us trying to, once again, help keep our prices down. If I'm able to sell a certain percentage of my wine direct to consumers, that could keep my overall pricing down. Sure. If I can't sell direct to anybody and I have to go all through distribution, these wines are going to be $62 a bottle. Yep. It doesn't help sure, anybody. Plus, it's no competitive landscape, right? Yeah. If it's all distribution, then where's the competition? Yeah. All I right. Just, we just need a balance. We, we should talk about drinking some wine. What do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's be do a it. a good idea. This is clearly a two-part episode. <laughs> all right. So, um... You want to go this yeah, way, Yeah, let's right? start with the Gary's. So let's start with the Gary's. I love that. The two I mean, Gary's. It's a buddies. very, very famous vineyard. Yeah. Um, you know, named after me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. Uh, so 2008, right? And uh, this holds in at 40 bones. And uh, let's see what's going on here. So tell us about this one. Uh, once it'll get our style, we're trying to be ready to drink. Big, bright, fruit forward. Still with enough structure. But once again, they'll, end, they'll last five, six, seven, eight years. Uh, but we just want bright vibrancy. I eat a lot of spicy food, big bold food. I need the Pinot to have a little more to it. So that's kind of what we're trying to get at. But we want it to also be pretty. We still want it to be Pinot Noir. 15-2 alcohol. Oh, you look, did you? Yeah. Ah, so yeah, it's not good. Yeah. That's, that's high, but it's not coming across in the nose at all. That's but, not high. Let me phrase that. It's not low. No. <laughs> it's not low. The, I, I know there's the... And what are you? What are you? What are you allowed to go a point in alcohol or half a point? By once, law? once you're over fourteen, it's a point either way. Right. So this could be sixteen two. But I'll tell you, it's not. And part of keeping with but what we all, do. But all three of these are fifteen two. Is that true, or some one's fifteen three and one's fifteen one? They, they could be fifteen one, fifteen two, fifteen three, just because of just the, to carry the, over the number. Well, but. that and, and the fact that when we sample these things, once again, the government wants us to. We have to submit these for approval, so we have to do it usually five to six months before we bottle. So that means I'm going through I barrels. Estimation. I'm going through barrels and I'm taking samples. Did I get the exact same Got amount it. out of barrels? So I think that's really what the one percent was allowed for. Sure. I think a lot of people use it as a marketing tool. Sure. We could have put fourteen four on these. Right. But we feel that it's important for our consumer to, to know. know the truth. And we what do you we think? get a lot of we get a lot of backlash from that because people go. 15-2, that wine's going to be too hot. I'm not going to buy I'm going to buy this wine that's 14-4, which may have more alcohol than our wine. Right, because it could be a 16-4. Well, or 15 four, four, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, we just try and keep it straight up. Here's what it is. And just taste it. That's our goal. And if you taste the alcohol, then I screwed up. Understood. Now, th there's a very interesting floral attack on the nose here as well. I think the, the flowers really speak to me on the nose on this wine. It's really bright and fun. I had one... I had one mailing list member one time give the best description for Gary's, and I think it applies not just to ours, but other ones, that Gary's is a wine that's like a big puppy dog that just jumps up, licks you in the face, and says, love me, love me, love me. It just, it's right there. I totally agree. It's not, and it's not about being intellectual. I mean, there was a good quote. Wait a minute, I disagree. I just well, uh, no, go ahead, go ahead. There was a good quote by Thomas Keller in The Latest Spectator, and he said, like, his food isn't intellectual, it's emotional. And I think this is emotional. This is about fun. I really don't want my wine to challenge me at the end of the day. I got enough challenges, you know? <laughs> yes. I really, believe me, I've got enough. I don't want to sit down wine, and have to wine is figure it out. I, I want it to be, but I want there to be a lot of stuff there. That, you, you know what's ironic? That being said, the first adjective that came to my mind is complex because it is a pretty darn complex wine. 
with nice. all the fact that you want to make this fun and accessible, this has some pretty distinct complexities to it. There's this really interesting gaminess to it, like almost like beef jerky type flavor. There's a beautiful red fruit. I'm getting some earth tones. I mean, there's some complexity in this wine. This is not, you know, oh, this is Pinot. But hopefully, you didn't have to wait 10 years to get those things to come out. And well, you're not waiting. And we just opened this, you know. Two seconds ago. Yeah, so it's not like been sitting here for in a decanter for three hours either. It's coming right at you. This is really good. Um, what I really like about this wine is the raspberry flavoring on the back end. I mean, raspberries really, there's almost like a beautiful raspberry. You know, like you go to those like, stuffy like pastry shops and like a little raspberry tort like this could be like $27. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It tastes like that. There's just this gorgeous like raspberry tort almost like if you took a raspberry tort a $27 one and put a little bit of like tea on top like tea like because there's some grainy tea like characteristics on this wine. I'm going to have you write all my notes from now on. <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> but I, I mean that's kind of what, what are you getting here? Am I am I on point? Am I completely out of no, my I mind? No think, I think you're right. One of my... This becomes one of my big problems describing all these things because this is really good. I don't eat fruit. Weird. I don't eat vegetables. That's a travesty. Yeah, I know. It's really bad. We can talk about the grease theory other times. So is that spoke. because of a, a stone? no? I just I just don't like vegetables or fruit. I, I can't even stand grapes. So when we people now start that's a headline. when start people start talking about <laughs> now nuances that's a headline. when people start talking about nuances of this fruit this raspberry or this is one or this cherry I'm kind of like. I know it because it tastes like cherry pez, you know. I'm, sure. Yeah, that's... You, you refer to a lot of candy? Because yeah. we use a lot of candy references yeah. in the show. Razzles and Big League Chew and nerd candy. Oh, You know, God. like fake fruit bombies yeah. can get very grape nerd candy yeah. or Big League yeah. Chew-like. This to me gets a lot So you of... still eat a lot of candy? Oh, not as much. I, just, I, I get you... it from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Are Jolly you... Rancher. Jolly You're... Rancher chair. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially the stick. Remember yeah. the stick Jolly oh, Rancher? Were like the they were like almost different than the cube, like the rectangle. Yeah. I was kind of sad when those disappeared. You don't see them much anymore. They would really screw up with your mouth, though. Like, I think the way it was, you'd always, like, cut the top of your roof. Like, those and Captain Crunch. Do you eat Captain yeah, Crunch? Yeah, Captain Crunch. And rips the crap at the top of your roof. And Sour Patch Kids. Love them. Yeah. Are you a big Sour Patch oh, fan? I would rather do sour than... You're like Justin Bieber. He's obsessed with them. Really? Don't ask how I know. Okay, so, <laughs> fine. Love it. I Great wish I said I didn't know who that was, but I did. I, I love that you did. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Great, great little wine. What's going on, Mutt? We gotta stop. Right, we gotta but, stop? I gotta put another tape in or we're gonna run out of time. I love that. So, so we'll just pick it up like, let's move on. Yeah, let, you know. So I'll be running getting tape. Yep.